be impossible. So I'm thankful when I let him know on a daily basis and minute by minute that I need him every second of the day. Amen. That I cannot go through life without him. Amen. I, I refuse to go through life yes, Lord. without Jesus. Amen. I bless him. I trust him. Hallelujah. I trust yes, him with Lord. my life. Mm. My entire life I trust him. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about this morning spiritual short-sightedness. How amazing is that? Amen. I was thinking about some things that had occurred throughout the week. <laughs> and in all of those situations I thought about, I said, you know what? The bottom line is spiritual short-sightedness. They cannot see beyond where they're at because they have been blinded. So I wanted to just give it that little title, just being spiritually short-sighted. It's not their fault. It really ain't. They're just in a bad place. Then I had to think about, well, I've been in one of those places too. Me and Roxy say she's been in one, so I know y'all been in one. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you haven't been in one, keep living. It's on the way. It's on the way. It happens. But we have the word of God. That is our guide. And he gives us he gives us direction. He gives us instruction. All we need to do is get at it. Read it. Let it get in your spirit. Let God write it on the tablets of your heart. So that it's in there. When the enemy comes, you'll have something that you can fight with. And that you can conquer any short-sightedness that's before you that tries to keep you from getting to your destiny. And for the last month or so, we are a couple of months, we've been talking about getting to our destiny and how the enemy comes in and he afflicts and he starts to, he starts with the family. Mm -hmm. If he can get in the home front, yeah. he's got some things he's getting ready to shake up and he'll disturb and he'll get you off track. Mm -hmm. But we have to recognize whose device it is mm -hmm. and where this is coming from. So that we'll know how to fight it. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is by studying to show thyself approved, mm -hmm. a workman who need not be ashamed, who can rightly yes. divide God's word. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm going to ask, uh, if you can get me a strong reader, if, uh, a strong reader, if I can get Genesis 25, 27 to 34. I need a loud, strong Reader, most people probably feel as though they're missing out on God's blessings. They'll look at people that are not in the Word of God, that's not walking upright, but they see them being blessed. But instead of knowing what well, the Word of God says, that He brings on the just as well as the unjust. Yes. It's like the man that was born blind. Was there a reason behind it? No. It was for God's glory. Does it mean that they're going to get in heaven because they are being blessed on this side? No. It's for God's glory. Because if God never blessed anyone, you would never know that you can have that or that you could get what they have. The difference is, is that the drug addicts, they've gotten the vision. They got the picture. They know how to go about and make money and make it multiply. We, on the other hand, we get a little change. The first thing we do is run to the Eastwood Mall, Southern Park Mall, and we're in the stores buying stuff that we don't need. But the one that's selling the drugs, they have it. So they've caught the vision just like the people in Hollywood. They're coming out with all of these movies because they have gotten the vision. But where we are, we're Christians, we're not even realizing that we're right now, this day, in Antichrist. Because we have really not studied the word of God and to understand where we're at today. So yes, you miss out on God's blessings because you're not in the right place. It's not that God doesn't desire it for you to have. He said, I wish that you would have life and that you would have it more abundantly. 
abundance. That's all. It's, it's unexplainable. The amount. That's his desire for us. On this side. On this side. We can experience heaven on this side. A little bit of heaven on this side. If you didn't have any difficult times, you would never know that God can bring you out. God causes some things to occur just like he did with Job. He gives the enemy permission to throw these darts at you, roadblocks, and that's all they are is a roadblock. It's something to hinder you, to stop you, to, just for a moment. You don't trip over it. But it stops you, and you've got to figure out a way to get around it. It's just a block. It's not the whole road is blocked off. It's the part of the road where you're going right now is blocked off. But I've got to figure out now how I can get around what the enemy is set right there because it's not everywhere. But I've got to get fine tuned to God and ask him, how do I get around that stumbling block? Because that's all it is. It's there to trip you up, but not to stop you. We can act so foolishly and what we're going through, those are the things that cause us to miss out. And when you're ignorant to the word of God, or you have gotten blinders on that you've actually never been taught in a church what and how you're supposed to act. You can react foolishly. I've seen a lot of pastors that have been in churches and they, they've been called and they've gone through proper protocol and they, uh, they're still sitting up under their uh, pastor and never once, maybe once in a blue moon, they'll get up and they'll get the opportunity to preach. And then when somebody do finally hear them because they don't realize that they've only had one or two opportunities right there with their people. And then they send them off to another church and they get up. And I literally heard this story where this man went to one of the churches and he got up on the pastor's bench. Stood up. Out of order. Out of order. Acting foolishly. A lot of times even for our children in school, just because of peer pressure, and you see somebody else doing something, and it'll cause you to get out of your carriage and you begin to act foolishly. Not making a wise decision from what you were taught as a child. And most, some of the, the ones that have been brought up in the Lord, they know better, but because of peer pressure, the enemy gets in their mind and causes them to get off course and then they begin and it really changes what people think about you. It literally changes what they think about you. Then you gotta basically like start over and get the slate clean so that you can go back and start all over. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. Fearful of what somebody's gonna think or what they're going to have to say about you. And I think that's kind of what happened to Esau. He was hungry when he returned from his hunting trip. But there we had Jacob there offering him a bowl of soup. He caught him in his weakest moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Just like kids. You guys are in school. And just because you don't quite fit in and you, you've been beat up almost all the way through the school year and here you may have Bobby come over and Sally come over and it's just leaning just a, far, just a little bit, just a little bit, just to sway you just a little bit. And the next thing you know, you've gotten detoured off track. And they caught you at your weakest moment because right then and there, they didn't re now the devil know that you was feeling kind of down, that they caught you on the right day to come and bring the wrong stuff to you. And then you fall into the trap. Mm 